Bienvenue, welcome, bonjour. I'm Miss K. Today we're gonna make hot dogs in a bun. Hot dogs to go, kinda like pigs in a blanket. We're gonna start with some water. We're going to need 59 grams or a quarter cup of warm water. Not too warm. If you don't have a thermometer, go with body temperature. Next, we need a tablespoon of sugar. That's 12 grams. And yes, don't be scared. We're doing a yeast dough. We need three quarter teaspoons of instant yeast. You can use active dry if you want. It's about two grams. Personally, I never use active dry, but if you do, you need to pause here and let this um, sit for about five minutes till it's bubbly. Next, we're adding in 120 grams or one cup of all-purpose flour, one tablespoon of softened butter. That's about 14 grams. I cut mine into smaller pieces so that it'll incorporate better, but if it's really soft, you can just throw it all in. While I'm doing this, do me a favor and like this video, give me a comment, subscribe, help me out with that YouTube algorithm. Thank you! Okay, butter for taste. To keep this soft, we're going to also add a tablespoon of neutral oil. That's 12 grams. I'm using a canola oil. You could use vegetable. You could use um, a light olive oil. Up to you. But you need 12 grams, one tablespoon. Next, you need a quarter teaspoon or 1.5 grams of a fine salt. I'm using my KitchenAid here to mix this up. You can most certainly do this by hand if you'd like, but I'm just gonna put my paddle attachment. I'm not using the dough hook because there's not very much dough, as you can see here. Now we're just gonna knead this until we get a nice elastic dough. Now you can see this is a smooth elastic dough. We're just going to fold it in on itself until we get a nice smooth bowl. And then we're going to place this in an oiled bowl. Mine still needed a little bit of work even after in the machine so I'm just kneading it on itself in the bowl. Look at that texture. It should not be sticky. By hand, this would take about 10 minutes. In the mixer, it was about five. Next, I just laid it out on my counter and I'm folding it in to make that tight ball. And I'm going to spray some oil into the bowl to keep it from sticking while it rises. Everyone always tells me they're scared of yeast doughs. Don't be scared. It just takes time and patience. And if you haven't got it, then don't do yeast dough. Just to show you how I ball it up again from a different angle. Just pull the edges into the middle, press down, and then roll it between your hands like this. And that thumb is just kind of pushing the dough into my hand. That's it. And then spray and plop it in. So, it's really hot here, <laughs> so I put some plastic wrap on this and set it out in my garage so it would um, rise faster. Can you see the steam on <laughs> But you can see our little friend here has doubled. I've also got a baking pan aligned with part. We are going to cut this into five equal pieces. Okay, and about 45 grams each, so I am going to use my scale. So I have my pan with parchment there. I'm just gonna reuse that plastic wrap that was on top of my bowl. If you used a plate on top of your bowl, you can use that on here as well. I don't wanna get dough on my scale here. And if you're smart, when you buy your kitchen scale, get one that's flat all the way across the top and doesn't have these little notches and things to catch food in. That's my uh, advice of the day. Okay, so I'm just gonna use my bench scraper. Find a score. Okay, that that would be quarters. That's too big. Five five. I don't know. I don't know. That's just the way it works out. So I'm just gonna cut out the piece. Let's 
see. Okay, that's 52, so that is too big. Okay, so that one's perfect. So I need to move out that size. So there we go. And then we're just going to fold these into balls and let them rest on the bench for about 10 minutes to let the gluten relax. This is on the bench and this and your thumbs just kind of pushing it into your hand and it'll make a nice round smooth ball. Reuse your plastic wrap to cover the dough balls so they don't dry out while they rest for 10 minutes. Next up we need five hot dogs. You can use other sausage but it does need to be pre-cooked. I am poking my hot dogs because hot dogs like to explode sometimes. <laughs> I don't even know if you have to do this, but this is what I do. I'm using an all beef frank here. Use the ones that you like best. And yeah, I know there's six hot dogs and five dough balls. Don't even try to make six dough balls. I tried that. It's not enough bread. But maybe I need to see if I can tweak this to make six dough balls for six hot dogs. Next, we're gonna take our dough balls one at a time and roll them out with a little rolling pin or a clean piece of PVC like I have here into an oblong shape that we can wrap around the hot dog. If you don't let your dough balls rest for 10 minutes, you are going to have trouble with this because it's gonna snap back. You can kind of coax this with your hand as well if you're getting an uneven shape. And then we have a couple of different ways that we can wrap this around the hot dog. If you want, you can leave it plain. You can add cheese in here. I've added mustard. Today I'm gonna do some cheese because I have some little cheese slices I need to use up. And I'm just breaking these so I can use them up. This is like the little snack pack that comes with the crackers. Reuse. Shredded cheese is probably a better option. And if you're wondering, this is cheddar and Colby Jack. Now the easiest way would just be to tuck this around the hot dog, thusly. And then kind of roll it. Make sure when you put it on the pan that you're putting it seam side down. Here I'm just pinching the seams a bit. And you're gonna want it this seam side to go down on the pan see like that that way it won't pop open in the oven now if you want to get fancy we can kind of make a braided look i'll show you how to do that one roll it out the same way we did before Place the hot dog in the center, and then instead of wrapping it around the hot dog, I'm gonna cut the sides first at an angle. Again, I'm just using my bench scraper. You can use a knife if you want. And I'm just kind of making petals, and then I will alternate folding those in.
This might be fun for Halloween mummies. I don't know. It looks kind of cool. I like it. And I didn't mention it before, but I don't have any extra flour on here. I'm not having a problem with it sticking. If you do, put as little flour as possible because you don't want to add too much flour or it will take away from the softness of the final product. This time I'm going to put the cheese on the bottom and the hot dog on the top. Again, the cheese is optional, but you know, I'm thinking if I have the cheese in here, I can dip this in some chili. No matter how you decide to wrap your dogs, just make sure that the seam side goes down on the pan so that it doesn't come undone. Here I'm just going to rearrange this dough because I didn't have any across the top and I'm offended. Don't worry too much about how they look raw. It's going to rest and rise again and it'll get puffy and they'll look fine when they come out of the oven, I promise. Okay, maybe I shouldn't promise, but the likelihood that they'll be too ugly to serve is <laughs> very small. Let's do another one with no cheese just to show you how that looks. I'm thinking this would be great for um, a picnic or to take in your lunch. You could have a dip with it. Um, this could be good for a 4th of July barbecue maybe. All right, again, nice and smooth seam side down so let me just finish these up I'm on my last one what is your favorite hot dog topping please tell me in the comments <laughs> y'all don't kill me but I never put mustard on my hot dogs I've always put mayonnaise there I said it but <laughs> as much as I love ketchup I can't stand ketchup on hot dogs I've done the mayonnaise thing since I was little my favorite hot dog topping would be mayo cheddar cheese, white onion, and some chili, like wolf brand chili. Tell me in the comments what your favorite hot dog topping is. And if I didn't mention it before, I originally found this recipe online. I will give you the link below to the original recipe in the comments. So now I have all of my hot dogs on the tray. I'm going to cover them. We're going to let these rise in a warm place once again. We're going to let them rise until they're puffy. It's going to take about 20 to 40 minutes depending on the temperature in your kitchen. If you're fra afraid this will stick, you can certainly spray the plastic, but I haven't had a problem. While we wait for these to rise the last time, we're going to preheat our oven to 375 Fahrenheit. That's about 190 C. And when they're puffy like this, we're going to let them bake for 12 to 15 minutes in the middle rack. When they're nice and golden brown, we're going to place them on a rack to cool. And we're going to brush them with some melted butter. Ta-da! Don't those look lovely? The melted butter uh, tastes good. It makes them shiny, but it also keeps the crust soft and it won't get hard later. It's a good hack that you can use on dinner rolls or breads of any kind. So I actually didn't melt my butter. I'm just using a brush and a tub of the spreadable butter. Because these are hot, it's going to melt on there. But if you don't feel comfortable doing this, you can certainly just melt it and brush it on. You want a confession? I've used the stick of butter directly on here, but I don't want to do that in front of y'all. And that's it. These are ready to serve. Now you can serve them as is, like this. You can take them with you in your lunch. 
you can have a dip on the side like I said I'm going to have chili for my dip because I want a chili dog Let's take a look at a cross section and give this a taste. So you can see nice soft dough. If you want more bread, you can make four of these instead of five. It's soft. Let me know if you make these. Bon appetit. These are delicious. If you want another lunch idea, watch this next video. Au revoir. Bon appétit. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.